Hi, welcome to Numeric's video blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Today, the continuing story on negative rates. Uh, important note, today is Wednesday, March 23rd, so a quick update. So most recently, we've seen Swiss Central Bank holding negative rates steady. Uh, Norway's Central Bank is cutting interest rates to a record low, refusing to rule out going below zero, and Hungary is cutting its overnight deposit rate by 15 basis points to negative 0.5%. And ECB's latest monetary policy changes to cut the deposit rate by 10 basis points to a historic low of negative 0.4% and stepped up the pace of quantitative easing. And finally, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand recently cut its official cash rate uh, by a quarter of a percentage point to 2.25%. Joining me today to discuss the latest trends uh, that are continuing in this negative world is uh, Vice President of Business Development here at New York's Udi Sella. Udi, welcome. Thank you, Jim. Good to be here. Uh, let's just jump in. Uh, today's topic clearly is uh, the Eurozone. Um, and as we continue to see uh, countries going negative, um, you know, from your perspective, is this policy working? So it seems that we kind of reached the end of the cycle in, in the respect that it doesn't seem to work as as well as the central bankers would, because basically a few things happen. Banks are still reluctant to lend money to small businesses, and uh, as a result, you know, no, um, not enough uh, employment is being created. Inflation expectations are still very low, and uh, therefore it doesn't seem that uh, the plans actually uh, are as much uh, that effective. And the problem is that. Uh, So, you know, you, you bring up uh, lending pro uh, policies uh, of the banks, not lending. Um, you know, we have a 900 bi uh, billion euro corporate bond market uh, uh, in the Eurozone at this point in time. You know, what are what is the impact of this policy uh, on those bonds? So, I think it's a very interesting question because what is happening is that there, there are specific categories of bonds which are eligible to be bought by the... Uh, the ECB and bonds that are not. So obviously this has created, a, um, I'd say, a, a dual market where bonds that are eligible for purchase by central bank are in demand. And therefore companies that fall into the space issue debt. And of course the second thing is that we see in, in, the, uh, in the market is that, you know, a, a tremendous amount of bonds probably uh, Around 10 trillion, uh, worth of 10 trillion dollars are, are trading in negative uh, uh, rates uh, area. And to this point, the Swiss banks, uh, I mean, the, the Swiss government calls up to, I believe, 40 years to use the negative. Uh, in Japan, we have never, I think, about 40% of the uh, government debt is held by uh, Bank of Japan. And the 10 years is necessary for so those. So we think uh, massive distortions in the market. Now we're just going to normalize back to the U.S. And interestingly, the Russian Central Bank kept the rates pretty high at 11 percent. And as a result, finally, we're seeing a retreat in the dollar versus the Russian ruble. The ruble is expensive. So that, that's an anomaly. Given, the, given that government bonds are, are now uh, displaying long-term maturities that are negative, uh, you know, specifically to Swiss, uh, what is that going to mean from a borrowing perspective um, also? And then what are the implications as it relates to the proceeds of those bonds? You know, is this the potential for uh, government disruption uh, in the upcoming years? Well, it's difficult to have this discussion without going too much, you know, into politics, but it, it, it does seem... Uh, pretty safe to say that again, without uh, structural reforms, labor markets, etc., this impact uh, uh, the impact will be, I believe, pretty limited. Uh, one interesting thing to note in this respect is when Draghi came, the uh, that uh, the Green Central Bank came up with the plan, uh, the expectations were given, you know, the, uh, 
the expansion of the Mauritian uh, evening that you know the euro would weaken, and actually there was a perverse effect that they actually used the euro strengthen. So I think that was a very strong signal to show that it's not really working the way we wanted because obviously one, although in the Mauritian Free Bank it would say that weakening the local currency is, is an objective of this program because it would boost the one other final question. Uh, I want to go back. Uh, you know, you alluded to the ECB's policy on uh, the uh, asset repurchase program. Um, clearly, the drivers are to boost market liquidity. Is it working? Uh, no, actually, I don't think it's working that well because uh, uh, one of the things that is happening, uh, and this is coupled with you know the increasing regulation, is that uh, banks are moving away from market making. And the positions are being, uh, the bank's falls are smaller. As a result, uh, liquidity has been hampered uh, massively. And even us, in our company, we see uh, banks using, uh, adjusting to this new uh, 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 regulatory environment by actually looking to optimize the operation and move out of, uh, of uh, less profitable businesses. So I think in, in that sense, uh, there is a price that we can pay for the relation and that would be no uh, interest. Udi, I want to thank you so much. I mean, uh, clearly, uh, this is an ongoing story that uh, we're continuing to track and monitor and, and, and talk about. And I want to pre thank you, Udi, so much for your time uh, to share some of your thoughts as these programs continue uh, to proliferate uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the globe. So thank you, Udi. And, of course, we... We always want to talk about the topics that you want to talk about, so please follow us along on Twitter at NX Analytics and stay up to date with everything that's going on here at Numerics on LinkedIn and Numerics.com. I'm Jim Jockel. Thank you very much.